Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, what can I say? I think I might be kind of in my flop era. I haven't shot anything good lately, at least in my own opinion, but you know, sometimes we can be our own harshest critics. However, like any good flop era, it's crucial for one to break free of it. And I had an upcoming trip to Chicago where I could really let loose and shoot some, I don't know, Chicago stuff. I'd never been to Chicago before. All I really know about it is deep dish pizza, Chicago glizzies, bean, and Jardia. No, sorry, no, Jardinera. This whole trip was being put on by our comrades over at The Dark Room, and I wouldn't be going out there alone. Although, here is your courtesy reminder that we are always alone from the day that we are brought into this world to the day that we semi-accidentally paraglide into an active volcano. Several other photographers with much more talent and charisma than me decided to come along as we slicked the city. Actually, that sounds kind of gross. We became city slickers is what I was going for. There would be photo walks, beers and cameras, and of course a viewing of the masterpiece that everyone should study hard at least once in their lifetime, Nighthawks, which is basically my photographic northern star. In fact, I've pretty much based my entire personality off of Edward Hopper and abandoned old Jason completely. So to get the trip started, I rode my bike down to LAX, which I had heard has free motorcycle parking. That is, if you can impress the attendants with a sick wheelie. While unfortunately I couldn't get it up, I did leave my bike there with the hopes that it would not be towed. Like any good trip anywhere, it's really more about the people that you go with. So this one was already off to a bad start. After trekking across town on cloud nine, or maybe just delirious from extreme sleep deprivation, we arrived at our hotel. Oh, we're on one. Oh, we are. The lighting on you is really nice. All right, I just got to my room, so <clears throat> room tour. Not too bad, not too bad. This is the sink. This is where, I don't know what I'll be doing there, but something. I don't know what this is about, but we can go ahead and Hide that in a dark place. Not too bad. Let's check out the view. So this is kind of funny. This iPad controls like climate, curtains, blinds, lights, colors. I'm in room uh, 1502 and this is set for room 1507. I've just been adjusting uh, somebody else's room controls. Um, so probably gonna have fun with that later. Anyway, it was time for action. It was time to load up some of Jared Poland's worst nightmare film. We didn't travel across half the planet for no reason. We were in Chicago to shoot some hot bangers. I decided to keep it cinematic and bring my X-Pan or Fuji TX1 or hole in my bank account, whatever you want to call it. But to spice things up, I brought along a Nikkor shift lens to use with an adapter instead of the standard X-Pan lenses like the 45 millimeter. This shift lens is interesting. It's a more economical way to get into a wider angle lens on that system than dropping like six G's for a 30 millimeter. But can it actually deliver? This is the uh, only lens that I brought. It works on the X-Pan and it pretty much covers the whole thing. I would say the big issue with it is that there's no like rangefinder connection. So everything's scale focused. Oh, I need to put batteries in the camera. Anyone else have like keys on their uh, key thing that they don't know what it goes towards, but you're kind of hoping one day like, one of your mysterious relatives passes away and they tell you that key was actually uh, the key to a secret chamber that is hiding a sacred treasure. Oh, dude, I have a coin. What am I doing? I got change at the airport. So stupid sometimes.
the last time I shot this, it was having a light leak issue. It was coming from a gap in the rear door here. So if you just put black gaff tape over it, it, uh, it fixes it. A little pro tip for you. Anyways, people were slowly trickling in for the weekend of events. Caleb, Glenn, Jonathan, and I, and Trev, unfortunately, went for a walk and shot some cityscapes, each one different and totally unique from one another. We're all taking a photo of the same shit. I wouldn't really say I got anything worthwhile yet. This shot is fine. I like the cab action here and the lights overhead. And this shot is okay too, with the lady sitting at the table here, but I still feel like I was missing the mark a little bit. Oh well, like any good struggling artist, it was time to source my creativity from unhealthy substances. Hello? Guess they found out that uh, I was controlling somebody else's uh, somebody else's room, temperature, and lights. I was going kind of hog wild on the lights. For dinner, we walked about 200 miles to go to this barbecue spot that was highly recommended. And it was solid on the barbecue front. Unfortunately, the mac salad was seasoned with asbestos or something because it tasted like butthole, and anybody with good taste agreed with me. There were some sick neon signs all around town on the way back, but I went against my own film photography oath and didn't shoot them. Mostly because I had 200 ISO in the camera and there wasn't quite enough light. Mood lighting. I don't know what the mood is for really, but that looks pretty romantic for a night in by myself. Anyway, after the 8.30 a.m. pregame at the bar, we headed out to the river for an architectural boat tour of the city. And I was hoping some X-Pan shots would come flying out at me, like piss on a windy day. This shot is a good start. It shows scale and context really well, but the colors are bland. If our subject here was looking this way instead too, that would have balanced the shot out nicely. But when you only have a split second to nab the shot and adjoining B-roll, you take what you can get.
with Trevor Savage like that. Anyway, whilst on a boat tour hosted by a lady who's giving off hot, strong, angry substitute teacher vibes. Feet that would out Eiffel Gustav Eiffel's tower. Eventually I did finish off the gold in the camera in an unspectacular display of true mediocrity. I'm trying to be more positive about my work overall, but yeah, this role just wasn't doing it for me. 20 shots, Kodak gold, X-Band, yeah, 17 keepers, yada, yada, yada. With that out of the way, I loaded up some FPP Wolfman, hoping that the raw concrete set on an overcast day would be the perfect combination for contrasty black and white. FPP Wolfman. I don't know what it is, but it's a very thin film stock. It's 400 ISO, and I decided to throw on the yellow cat piss filter to cut out some of the blue and hopefully add some drama to the sky. As the boat collided with the bridge and began taking on water, we headed out to the open lake for one final nice view of the city before we all went down with the ship. These shots are overall fine. They're very contrasty, which I think was the goal. Wolfman is an okay film stock. I wouldn't say it's the sharpest. It's also got this interesting background texture to it, which may be in part because of how paper thin the film is. Eventually we cruised on down to Lower Wacker Street, which Trev thinks is the most hilarious thing he's ever heard. I finished off the Wolfman with this shot of two bros with so much sexual tension that they couldn't be anywhere near each other. Of the 20 shots of Wolfman in the x band maybe only like 10 of them were good enough to show, but still no portfolio shots. On our way to deep dish pizza, I deep dish slammed some FPP X2 in the X pan. X2 is just Eastman double X cine film, I believe. Same stuff as Cinestill BWXX. 200 ISO, black and white halations. You already know the drill. This isn't your first day of film photography. But if it is your first day of film photography, you should know that Kodak is like two minutes away from bringing back color infrared film. And you can grab your nearest flaming hot Mountain Dew and chug in solidarity and Kodak will totally listen to you. In the dark seedy underbelly of Lower Wacker, I shot this. It's just Caleb, but it's very dramatic and moody. The lighting from the street above coming down the stairs is a big part of that, and the various hits of artificial light turned out really nice. Here's another spot of light I found and barely had enough ISO to capture, but it's not too bad. These Lower Wacker shots are pretty good, but I know I could do better, so I made a note of it and I'd be back in a couple of days to prove it. Jason, can I get you in front of those wings right there? Uh, does that look like... Anyway, at lunch and sporting my Shakira shirt that is awesome and literally nobody ever commented on the whole time I was there, we pounded some deep dish pizza that was kind of soggy. It was fine, but dense and too moist. It was basically swamp pizza. <laughs>
back in the room for two seconds and then going to beers and cameras. See you there. Beers and cameras that night was popping off as per usual with some crazy giveaways like a Yashica Mat 124G and Yashica T4 point and shoot, as well as some surprise superstar guests. After getting sloshy drunk next to a bunch of expensive film cameras, we headed home while Caleb recapped the morning boat tour. I mean, you have you have hot and horny people on a boat. Hey, how's it going? Doing good. Just hanging out with your son. Just being lazy. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, sounds like everything's normal back at home. So what are you guys doing tomorrow? We have a uh, photo walk. That's gonna be crazy. That's like 300 people signed up or something like that. Oh, damn. And is it still so strange for him? Yeah, I think there's like a 70% chance. Focus right, but I guess you'll see in two seconds. All right, all right, so I got some prints. These are from New York. Um, we met up with Sissy Lou to do a podcast, and she shot some 110 that she then darkroom printed. So here's a probably the best photo anyone's ever taken of me. I look very contemplative. It's crazy that 110 can actually scale up to. I think this is an 8x10, so, and then we got one of uh, probably the cutest couple on the planet. That morning, things were going to change up a little bit. Juan, the mastermind behind Beers and Cameras, offered up his Leica M7 as a ritualistic blood sacrifice to the channel. He let me use it that day. I'd never used an M7 before, but I'm a big fan of the M6. The biggest difference being that the M7 has an automatic mode that is aperture priority, which means you can set the aperture you want to use and the camera will calculate your shutter speed for you. Super handy for quick street photography, which is more or less what I'd be doing that day. What's up, man? Just loading a this camera. For reference, I believe the lens he had on the camera was a Voigtlander 35mm 1.5. Unfortunately, the rain was somewhat hampering our efforts, but that morning we met up with a large group of photographers for a photo walk around Millennium Park, which features the Bean, a metallic sculpture that floated down from the skies one day and emits an ominous hum that occasionally vaporizes people standing near it. Its origins are still a mystery. In an effort to escape the rain, a hundred photo nerds descended upon the cultural center and probably ruined the performance that was taking place in there at the time. But it was worth it for some sweet photography on the M7, like this shot. I don't know what it is exactly, but I like it a lot. The foreground subjects are silhouetted, the lighting is wonderful, and I like that we can see the buildings in the distance.
This shot is probably the best from the cultural center. It's Steven, deep in contemplation about, I don't know, Steven stuff, like documentaries probably. The lighting from the front window is nice and diffused, which draws your eye in directly to his face against the dark background. I love the silhouette of his backpack against the spot of light on the wall behind him too. It all just worked out well. After getting kicked out of the cultural center for underexposing film, we once again hit the streets and headed back to The Bean, where we met up with some familiar faces from days of this channel's past. Nerd. And you know what? I finally came face to face with my one true idol. No, not Caleb. The ever-elusive gold hassy. Just as brilliantly gold as it is hassy. video with uh, Caleb, there was like multiple things that he said that was hilarious, that was like on the line, mm. and I was like, and then since I was there, I know what he cut. Baby, that's how daddy does it. <laughs> Before popping into the hotel for the night, I shot this quick moment across the street, and it's one of the best from the trip. The lighting, the setting, and the silhouette of the subject all just make it look very noir, and I really like that. And to top that, I also took this in the hotel lobby before returning the Leica M7 to Juan. Of the 36 exposure roll of HP5 in the Leica M7, I had 16 keepers and maybe two or five portfolio shots. I don't know, there were some good ones in there, and I'm trying to be as objective as possible, which means I second guess myself as much as possible. It seemed that now, with the trip coming to an end, I was finally hitting my stride. Luckily, we had one more half day the next day, so we said, why not be horribly hungover for it? And we hit the hotel lobby bar. The next morning I decided to load up some Lomo Red Scale I had been saving for a special occasion. Unfortunately, like me outright rejecting vegetables, the X-Ban outright rejected the Red Scale. I think Red Scale aired out. Oh, that's weird, it's not giving me like a frame number. Alright, well, I guess that's that. Oh weird, it's not even rewinding. My x pan does not like this roll of red scale. Something is going on. Rest in peace, only roll of red scale that I brought. Of this 36 exposure roll of red scale on the x pan I got zero photos that I would keep and zero portfolio shots. Might change my mind later though. Anyway, so I put in some HP5 again and it worked like normal because I immediately turned around and shot this. 
It reminds me of Edward Hopper's Sunlight in an Empty Room painting, except more depressing and with more environmental city context instead of what I can only imagine is an 80 foot drop off right into shark infested waters. Last day in Chicago. Um, it's been a really fun trip. It's been busy. It's been jam packed. Our flight doesn't leave till later, so we're gonna go to the Art Institute and um, see a little bit more Chicago. With time to spare before the Art Institute, we descended back down into the depths of Lower Wacker once again, which Trev still thought was hilarious. I shot some solid work down here. A lot of it was repeats from the last time, except now with a somewhat more inflated ISO and ego, why not throw that in there too? But some of it was fresh and exciting. Like this shot on HP5, which somehow barely held on to both the shadow and highlight details. Anyway, that was kind of a wrap on all of it. I was at the height of my photography for that weekend, but it was time to go home. Where do I stand with the 35 millimeter Nikkor on the X-Pan? Good question. That was totally unprompted. I probably won't continue using it. Like I said before, it doesn't fully cover the X-Pan pano format. So you just end up cropping your scans in a little bit, which probably changes the effective focal length to somewhere around 40 millimeters, not too far off from the standard X-Pan 45 millimeters. And at least that has rangefinder compatibility. Plus the 45 millimeters a little bit more compact on the body and you don't smack it into everything when you spontaneously pull a 180. But speaking of, you better spontaneously turn around and leap at this incredible opportunity to build a website through today's sponsor, Squarespace. I talked a lot about portfolios in this video, but what's the point in having a portfolio if nobody can see it online? I use Squarespace to host my own photography portfolio because getting it all set up was easier than Pi thanks to their custom building modules and simple drag and drop nodes. I was able to arrange images next to one another to sample my portfolio layout all at a mouse clicks notice, which made it easy to establish what order of images worked and what did not. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates you can choose from and furnish your new site with Squarespace's intuitive user interface that allows you to build portfolios, blogs, and even web shops. And if you run into any snags during the process, you can check out Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support to get you back on track in no time. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Chicago was awesome. It was really cool to meet everyone that came out to the meetups and have some one-on-one -on -one time with y'all, which should be hitting OnlyFans sometime soon. I feel like I got some good stuff too. These Laura Wacker shots are phenomenal, and this cafe shot is the gift that keeps on giving. It almost looks staged how well it's layered and lit. Just a lucky moment or street intuitiveness that I developed over a long weekend. 
you be the judge. I do think I had to warm up a little bit before I found this magic stride where I was shooting continuous work that I didn't immediately discard. I just have to figure out a way to get the photography back and forth foreplay out of the way before I go to a new city so I can just start off on a right foot. Anyway, I made it back to LAX and my bike was still there, so all's well that ends well, I guess. I hope you enjoyed this Chicago episode, and if I dissed some of your food, I'm sorry, but it sucked, so yeah.